Hello and welcome to the Floyd Models Friday Roundup show. Here we are with you on the 9th of June 2023. Really busy week this week. A couple of big things have been going on. One has been pushing on nicely with the ICM. Lots of live work with you guys as well, working on the Hurricane. And in the background to all of this, we've actually got the final reveal video. So that took God knows how many hours, basically about a day and a half to get that one up as well. So stay tuned because at the end of the show, instead of the normal sort of uh, gallery work from this week's work, we've actually got the reveal for the 148 SIG as well. It's around about seven minutes long, but some absolute gems in that build as well. So you probably want to stay around and watch that one. Anyway, all started this week over on the uh, Beaufort part three. Uh, so one thing I've often said about uh, ICM kits is that they are fantastic. You've got all the detail you can actually want for what I call a curbside model. And the great thing with that is it's reflected obviously in the price in the price and things like that and the sort of ease of construction with their kits. What you can do then is go and take it to that next level. So it's got a brilliant jump off point for carrying on with it. So down in here, we were looking and obviously it's got great recessed panel lines in some of the details, but it's just lacking in a little bit of detail here and there. So I decided in my infinite wisdom to re-rivet the entire aircraft. For this one, we're using good old fashioned Rosie the Riveters. Uh, I'm using around about uh, 0.75 uh sort of you know uh diameter wheels on this one but again i do use one mil for doing access panels for deeper panel line things like that and obviously for very fine sort of uh flush riveting shall we say and stuff like that i might switch it over to something a little bit finer as well like a 0.55 things like that so you've got plenty of options of how you want to do it and again i was lacking on a little bit of um uh sort of reference material for this so i did a lot of it sort of whiffery how I thought it would work. So I'm working in here thinking, well, obviously these larger panels, obviously they'll be riveted around the outside. That's not a problem. And it's probably going to have some of the sort of, you know, the actual uh, runners in there as well that can be riveted to, giving it all the strength. So obviously, again, using the bigger riveting for the bigger stuff, and then obviously for the lighter riveting for the actual runners working all the way around. Then again, by using tape, simple little masks on here, uh, markings in here, we can get the distances quite correct. And as you can see, we put this one in. So I'm just envisioning it would be around the outside. There is going to be a couple of runners through here and maybe a brace one going across as well. So that's what I've sort of done. And we generally, we worked our way around the entire model with this sort of in mind. Uh, and as you can see, going through, it's not perfect, it's not accurate, but I think what it'll do is give a nice level of detail when we come along with washes and obviously with weathering afterwards that you'll see this riveting come through and it'll just give the overall model just a little bit more depth, all right? So that's what this part was really about, going around, showing the riveting right the way over it in some areas probably gone a little bit over the top and like i explained it's not perfect riveting either the trouble is you get a little bit overconfident with it and before you know it you're running around riveting and you're going a little bit awry and things like that and get the odd wonky panel line in there so anyway that's talking all about re-riveting and certainly adding the detail to the actual uh, beaufort in there that's part three members you can go off and watch that video now it is up on the site all right so that's actually quite a nice one that led us into obviously the live show on tuesday so live show Tuesday. Sorry, I'm clicking the wrong screen okay, here. There we go. So right, let me yeah. just mute that. Uh, we were basically going through, and again, these builds are now live builds uh, right the way through. I don't do anything off camera or anything else like that. So it's sort of one-to-one -one timing. You might get the odd little bit or something else like that, but generally it is as you see it. So in today's part, we were doing all about oil. So I've shown you the brushes I use, the oil paints we actually use, and the techniques. And this is the dry technique. So basically it's just fading uh, the paint you've got. So obviously by adding yellows uh, and stuff like that, uh, you know, you can actually go through in the measures of it. I'm just trying to find a little bit here. And we were talking literally as it was leaching off and we were talking all different things, weathering from some of the other aircraft that I've done before using oils and stuff like that. And we were talking about going through, this is talking about leaching, uh, which uh, to be honest, I can show you a, a little bit here of how it should go. Here it is. This is that same bit of cardboard you can see there. It hasn't leaked through to the underside like I thought it was, but as you can see, you can just got this tiny corner. This is where all the linseed oil has come out, but this will still be good to use. Um, as I say, you're good for probably around about two or three days with it just sat on a pallet, but you can freeze it and get it back as well. But as you can see, it's still a little bit more. You can see a little bit of wet there in there, but you can see how the linseed oil has actually leached out of that right the way through. But anyway, 
in the actual show, we basically talk about obviously the techniques that are going around and how we're doing it and everything else. So as you can imagine, we're using yellow because obviously it's one of the primary colors that makes up green uh, and it's the lighter side. So by using a few little dots around, putting it in panel lines on all these different areas, and then basically we start just to buff it into the paintwork. So it's acting really like a mini little filter, but as you can see, it's one way of breaking it all up and going through. And at the moment, it looks a little bit strong, as you can probably see. But as we tend to then go into the blending phase, uh, it just makes it all look very nice and worn and everything just like that all right so that was really going through on there getting those all sorted uh, and giving it that look as you can see there now it's how it's fading in but it has a sort of faded those panels quite nicely very nice and then we're just going to go in and do exactly the same with the brown so down in here we've got a little bit of buff to lighten up the brown a little bit and we start going through the techniques of doing all of that right the way over and then we're just going to go through absolutely everywhere and buff it all in again there you go you can see that coming through very nicely and you just buff it until it's just about disappearing and then you stop and then that way you're left with a very nice effect just like that last up we're obviously doing post shading with oils as well so we're just using some neat oils uh, we've got a little bit of smoke here and we're picking out panel line and details and all things like that right the way through on this one and going through pretty much everywhere onto it and then onto the underside incredibly similar as well so down underneath here we're going to be using gray so we've just got a little bit of light gray we're going through the underside doing all the actual work on that and then we're buffing all of that back right the way through as you can imagine onto it until you probably end up with something looking something like this and here she is all completed so again you've got that nice sort of weathering look now both sides done now so it sort of evens it out but when we did the side by side before you could see on the underside as well we've got this nice sort of gray down in here we've got this and it's worn in and stuff like that so it's actually looking very nice happy how it's coming out it's doing a very very nice job on that one so next up for us what we'll be doing is uh chipping so we'll be doing some chipping onto this some wear and tear areas things like that and then obviously down under here we're going to be doing a little bit of streaking oil leaks hydraulic leaks things like that on the underside of the hurricane as you might imagine all the way through and that's the nice thing it's about this kit it's quite nice to be able to show it live and do all of this live so again this will be on tuesday will be the next part of this one where we'll be doing some chipping and bits and pieces and also up with you on that particular show will be matt uh, and matt's going to be going through the processes of actually putting down a metal undercoat as well so he's going to have a metal undercoat so we can chip through it onto his warhawk a little bit later so if you ever worried or wondered about painting metallics and stuff like that that's definitely going to be a show for you because I'll show a little bit of chipping and stuff. And whilst that, Matt's going to be showing you about putting down a metal coat as well. So again, completely free to watch. It's live three o'clock every Tuesday afternoon. We're with you for usually around about 90 minutes to two hours as well. So if you want to join us for that one, it'd be lovely to have a long usual thing. If you're not sure when we're on, if you just go on to the old uh, YouTube channel, like and subscribe and hit the bell button you'll get an email notification normally i put it up about three hours before we're going to go live but usually it is obviously on a tuesday afternoon sometimes it might slip from three o'clock to four o'clock and then we'll just run it through till six if that's the case but normally it's going to be always around about three o'clock on the actual tuesday afternoons and then obviously we'll be back with you on thursday for that show as well uh, and going through and hopefully we'll be finishing off the hurricane unmasking final touches gear stuff like that going on to it and uh, having a lovely looking hurricane as well so yes nice and there's your oils which i will get out of the way before i put my hand in them all right so anyway that was that and then up with you on uh wednesday we had the uh pm show uh, so this is all the news and what's gossip and things like that, the latest kit releases, what we've got coming in, what we've got on pre-order, answering your questions. And to be honest, I was championed this particular kit. So this is the old Hasegawa uh, Showtime 100 kit, obviously their F4J series, uh, 48 scale. Yes, it's nothing by today's standard, but to be honest with you, if you're not into all that internal details, as in like engines and intakes and wheel wells and all stuff like that, these are an absolute great kit. And also they go together really quickly. I've built one of these on commission days back in the uh, late 90s, early 2000s, where I built one and had it in the, the gentleman's hand in under 22 hours. So, uh, yeah, you can put one of those together very, very quickly as well. So, uh, but anyway, that is my Showtime 100 that I did many, many years ago. I think we worked that out as around about 2000, that kit. So it was built. So 23 years old. Shame I haven't got it anymore. But anyway, it would have been sold. It was a commission one. But anyway, you can see all about that one and all the various gossip and say the pre-orders, the bits and pieces, what's new, and obviously answering all your questions as well from the PM show. So if you want to catch up with that one, it's free to watch. You can see that it's up on YouTube, or obviously you can find them all down in here just like that all right then last up we've actually got the uh live show last night this was a members live show 
Uh, and down in here, we are talking about this particular kit, which I didn't even know existed. I've heard rumors of it, but there we go. Anyway, this is the 132nd scale Buccaneer. Um, absolutely incredible kit. And we were all, well, drooling over it, really, saying what an amazing kit and all the rest of it. So, um, yes, very, very nice. And we're all really jealous of Steve, if we're honest. Just didn't want to say it out loud at the time. But uh, it is an absolutely fantastic one. So anyway, members, you can go off and see this. You know what we're like on our own shows when we're not open to the public. Yes, it's uh, a little bit off topic, shall we say, at some point. Uh, and the usual fun and giggle and laughter and all the rest of it, as you might imagine, on that one. So members, if you want to catch up that one, we were on uh, last night, 7.30, every other uh, Thursday night. So if you want to catch up with that one, you can do. That's up with you right now. Uh, last up gets you up to today. So in here, we've got the Beaufort. And this is where it all slightly went wrong, I'll be honest with you, because it was all going absolutely fantastic right up to the point of masking. So Matt got me a masking set for this, uh, for the particular kit it's going through. So first of all, sorry, we put the wings on, which was a dream fit, no problem at all, completely seamless. All I had here is where I put that rear um, bit of the top of the flap. There's a, a, you can have two types on the back. Uh, I have mine just stepped out a little bit. So we use a little bit of scrape cleaning just to lower the height on that. And then the engines, which are the exhausts, are probably one of the most fiddliest things I've done in years. Um, but anyway, we've got all of those in. The exhausts are all in eventually. So that's all looking nice. Not that we're probably going to see any of these once they're uh, actually uh, covered up by the cowlings and things. But anyway, you know they're there. Then we did a little bit of tidy up work and then we were into this. So we got the mask set. And this Eddard mask set is absolutely brilliant. It's great, it's easy to follow, no problems at all. And it all went down there really, really nicely. Right up until the point where there isn't one in that particular set for this particular turret. So this is the top turret. Um, it's got the one for the taller turret, but this is the square top version, hasn't got it. So we thought, never mind, because the mask set is obviously available, uh, or the masking template with the kit, which is great with ICM. Unfortunately, it's the wrong scale. So as you can see in here, it's down, it's com completely gone. It's about one millimeter too big. So we thought, ah, so what we've had to do is end up cutting it out ourselves and going in. And then I showed you how to do it old school. So instead of using a masking set, how to do the thing about masking up, marking it with a pen so you can see where you're gonna go. And then obviously cutting it all out with a knife. But as you can see on here, we tried uh, obviously the actual, the, the genuine instructions themselves instead of a photocopy. So this is the one from here. And as you can see, it just doesn't fit. It's nowhere near it. So uh, at that point, we had to rescale it and recut it ourselves. So obviously, this is me doing it now right the way through. So yes, whilst it is a fantastic kit and all the rest of it, as you might imagine, it all went a little bit awry with this back turret. But the rest of it is all in now. As you can see, she is all masked up. And again, it's well worth buying a masking set, I would, because it's just so much easier to do that. I have to say the glass work was an absolute picture perfect fit, apart from, obviously, I'm not sure if it's the kit part or just me, but uh, down in here, just at the very front, you can probably see the instrument panel was a little bit too tall and it was fouling the side. So you didn't have a nice join on here, but that is all absolutely perfect. Uh, it's gone in there really, really nicely, all of that one, as you can see. So I'm happy of how all of that went in. So that's very, very nice. So technically now this means it's up for painting. So we've got a little bit of tidy up work on this one and we can get it down into actually some form of paint. Again, this bit at the back, it is all a loose fit because I don't want to do this one yet because uh, yes, it's just, well, it's an accident waiting to happen. So we're keeping that separate. So we'll mask off the back here and then we can do the rest of it in paint. We are doing it in the uh, North Africa, uh, sort of Egyptian colors. So it's going to be down in the, in the midstone with the brown and we're going to have the azure blue underneath. So uh, yeah, really looking forward to that. It seems to be that the entire team is doing Azure blue colors at the moment and North Africa colors, but it is an absolute great kit. Those wings are beautiful. They fitted perfectly onto this one. Very, very happy how it's all gone. So again, what we're gonna be doing is literally just running through, finishing pieces on this. And then next week, hopefully we'll be into paint, which will be really exciting to get it down into paint and stuff like that. So that kit's coming on very nicely. Same time next week, I was gonna do a little bit this week, but I haven't really had any time. So I've been doing the actual reveal video, but obviously we'll be starting on the Harrier. So we've got that massive 24 scale Harrier over there now. Uh, and we're gonna be working on that, which is gonna be not fun, but it will be once we get all the filling and sanding done. Once that's done, it should be quite a fun building that, but uh, looking forward to that one. At the same time, Matt's done something really stupid and sent me a kit. He sent me this particular kit, which he bought off of eBay because he's got one as well. So we're both going to be doing these at some point. So this is the classic old Matchbox Puma, which I built as a kid. And um, yeah, mine melted in the sun. There's a story to that. But uh, yeah, so that turned up. 
So we will be doing those in the near future as well. See, we don't just do the brand new releases and all the modern stuff. We do all the old stuff as well and have a lot of fun doing those. And again, I've got a couple of kit reviews coming up next week as well. All right, on all of that. So good job. Last up, obviously, just over to the forum. I have moved now and opened up the section. If you go right down the bottom, you've got 20 years of group builds down in here. Yes, we've been around that long. Um, but anyway, down in here, you've obviously got all your fantastic work. It is unlocked now, so you can comment and um, have a look at and all the rest of it, all of the reveal videos. There's actually 100 finishes, including mine, into this one. So well done, everybody. You were down in there, and obviously you can have a proper look. But if you do want to comment, it is unlocked now, so you can just pop back into the actual uh, group build uh, archive down in there, and you can see all of those as always. All right, so that's all going very well. Last up, obviously, over at the PM Store, lots of different things going on at the moment. We've got this fantastic Hasegawa stuff still in here. And again, some very nice and the latest uh, release, I should say, version of. Uh, we've got the Vampire down in there, the Epix one as well. So that's the FB59 kit in 48 scale. Very nice. And also we've got back in stock, the border models, no sections of the Lancaster. So if you want to do a big old front end of a Lancaster, that's definitely the kit for you. And again, some really nice classic uh, stuff as well, including the Starfighter, which still maintain. It's probably my favorite Starfighter in 148 scale. Uh, even though there's newer kits out there and all the rest of it. It's just a great kit, goes together very well. And again, some very nice uh, Stukas and Drakens and things. Really nice stuff down in here. So if you want to grab any of those, and again, if you look at the prices, they're not silly prices either. So very good on that one. And then obviously the special section, we've got my favorite kit. It's still probably one of my top five kits of all time. Um, it's going to load through. Come on, there we go. And that is the fantastic Phantom. As I say, if you want a curbside model and you're not worried about all the detail, this is the kit for you because it is absolutely mega. And if you do want to add some things to it, they do do some nozzles for it. You can get a full cockpit if you wanted to it and all the stuff that goes along. But if you just want a curbside model, honestly, this is where I go with this one as well. So true favorite of mine. I have built, I don't know, maybe 50, 60 of these kits over the years. Uh, they're a dream fit. They go together really, really well. It's just got a few little teething, little niggles with it, which is of its day. But again, there is a free to watch video build for that, a full video build. So if you want to go off and watch that one, you can do, uh, and I'll point out all those little pointers for how to get around the little problems on that particular kit as well. So, uh, yeah, very, very nice indeed. Plus the fact, don't forget, we've got all your books and pieces. They're all back in stock. If you'd have seen the Wednesday show, although that one's out of stock now. Uh, and again, we've got more books coming in, hopefully in the next week or two as well. So keep an eye out for all of those. Plus the fact, all the pre-orders, all the bits and pieces from the PM store, they should be with us next week, or if not, it'll be the week after. So we've got some big pre-orders coming in as well on all of those so yes keep an eye out for all of these and don't forget we've got a damaged box section and all your other paints and glues and sundries and tools and kits you can ever imagine are all down in here as well so you can get all of those if you want from the pm store just like that so yes a very busy week to be honest i spent most of it editing because i was editing obviously two parts of this and then i was editing obviously all your work for the reveal video but boy it was worth it so anyway, that's it from me. So now I'm going to leave you with the final reveal video from that SIG. So it's the 148 SIG. It ran for the last six months. And I say there's 100 entries in there. And please stick around to have a look because there's some really nice kits in there and some great work by you guys as well. Don't forget, members, there's no medals for these ones. It's just a SIG. You only get four medals with the actual uh, four group builds that we're doing. And obviously that's turning the tide one, which ends at the end of this month. So just remember, you've only now got, what, three weeks to actually get that one done or less than three weeks now to get that particular uh, group build finished off. Make sure you get it all done, all sorted into the reveal area, and then hopefully you will be qualifying then for the actual uh, medals as well for those particular kits. Anyway, that's it from me. Happy modeling, take care. I'll catch you all next week.